don't just go talking to chat GPT. Let's talk to chat G-O-D. You know what I mean? That was really good. Thank you. (laughs) Good morning. Uh, uh, Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Sage Ryan. I'm Jay Garcia. So it's very funny because Anthony usually does that part. So I was like, hello, good morning. And then I pause and I was like, I have to continue talking about the show now. Uh, As you might be aware, uh, Anthony's not here. We have Janet joining us. Thank you so much for for stepping in. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Anthony abandoned us. You know, it was only a matter of time. Yeah. Left his dog. He left his dog at home. He left his dog behind to go off to frolic with Lucasfilm in San Francisco. Yeah, well, you know, that now we know where the priorities lie. My yeah. priorities are right here thank as you. of today and forever. Yeah, thank you. So pretty, pretty big deal. Uh, people are very excited to see you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Welcome. We have uh, we have a lot of stuff for you today. We've got we've got the debate on uh, is $70 worth it for a video game? The endless debate we've had many times and some facts to back that up. Uh, we've got the FTC taking a little extra look at that Razer quote unquote N95 mask. We've got AI priests. We've got jiggle physics. We've got Lots of things to get to, but we couldn't get to any of that uh, if today's episode wasn't sponsored by Mad Cave Studios. For those who have uh, followed me for a little while, you know that Mad Cave Studios is very close to my heart. It, they make wonderful and incredible comics. They have an incredible, diverse uh, collection of storytellers. Uh, I used to host a show for them, and it's really cool that they're sponsoring today's episode of It's Too Early because tomorrow's free comic book day. Hell yeah. I, it snuck up on me this year. I'm very excited about it, but there's stuff popping up in the chat about that, and I will tell you more about it later. But first, how's your week been? It's been good, I think. Whenever anyone asks that, I'm like, what happened this week? And yeah, then it truly. kind of it kind of moves in slow motion. I think without looking at Google Calendar, it's God, tough to right? remember like yeah. what conversations were had. But it's been good. It's been productive. One of the things we bonded over was being Google Calendar girlies. You need to like, I don't know how anyone else can exist. I'll literally be doing something, like I'll, you know, do things on the fly and I'm like, let me retroactively put this into Google Calendar. Yeah, so you can look back at what you did. To get a sense of like what's going on in time and space. Yeah. yeah. You also, you made me an ocean girly. I'm in. I'm doing it. What do you, like, what's like the main thing you're using it for? Uh, So I, I I run this studio on Notion now. Like our entire content calendar is run Mm. on here. Uh, How we organize things, like when we have sponsors and stuff like that. Everything is built into it. So I built out a big content calendar. I plan all of our content in Notion now. Nice. It's wild. It's amazing. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, for people who might be meeting you for the first time, we have a lot of folks who are very excited to see you and, and know you very well. But for people that might be meeting you for the first time, what do you do? Yeah, uh, I'm Jan Garcia. I am a freelance content creator. Um, I write. I do mock reviews. I host podcasts. So you might know me from places like the Min Max Show, where I'm like on their Pillar podcast, on some streams. I'm also on Remap, uh, and I'm also on the Indie Council, where we talk about indie games. On my own, I stream, and I r- run my own site, pen2pixels.com. And like in between all that, you know, I'll like pop up on stuff like this. I'll do, you know, like one-off hosting gigs. I'll do, you know, mock review consulting. So pretty much anything related to games, like games is my main beat. Um, And you'll like see me doing a bunch of different coverage and content. I like to keep up with whatever is like hot. So that's usually what I'm playing, but also throw in like a long form let's play. So that's basically my content. And it always sounds like, I always forget how much it is until it's like time to do this feel. And it's like, man, you do a lot. This is kind of, this is a bit. Yeah. yeah. No wonder I'm not making those TikTok clips. It's a lot to clip <laughs> it's out. It's a lot to clip out. Like, you know what? I, I don't know. Go watch it. Go watch the long form. It all makes sense, though. It's very funny because as, like, we used to call this a video game news show. And we've slowly let go of both um, calling it a video game show and calling it a news show. Uh, <laughs> so now it's just a show. Um, because Anthony and I are like, we don't consider ourselves entirely experts on games anymore as people who we don't feel like keep up very well. So we're very excited to have you here as like an actual expert. Uh, I'm in the place where I play primarily indie games these days. Um, and I go back and I play a lot of old games. So I am, yeah. I am not keeping up. Like my main game right now is the Herbs Sims in the City. <laughs> we just streamed that on MinMax. No way. Yeah. It's it was, one of the greatest games ever made. You can meet the Black Eyed Peas. I think, I think it was that... It, was that the one that like we had like this thing called like game championship where like community members would like 
pick a game that they like loved and watch yeah. champion and then we did like a bracket and stuff i think that's where that came from or maybe it was like something we just wanted to do that we like it unlocked i can't remember but yeah it was a, a pillar of my childhood all gamecube games were i'm a gamecube girly till i die what's your oh, favorite too. console Fa honestly it, oh god is it the gamecube it might be the gamecube like i was on um a panel that was the gamecube is the greatest console of all time yeah and that every year that panel is like a different console is the greatest. but and the year <laughs> i was there was the definitive year yeah yeah i love the gamecube um i think we peaked in controllers with the gamecube it's yeah. like the wave bird that was the first time i had a wireless controller too Oof. i remember like stand like going into the hallway like mm -hmm. backing up slowly like with my brother where it was like oh my god it's still connected it's still connected. <laughs> we're like out in the hall like playing from like the other room you know that was the yeah. precursor to the wii u experience was us in the hallway with the wave bird right playing off the screen and being like oh my god we also peeked at the link cable on that connecting yeah. your game boy advance to your game boy sp to your gamecube the, t the technology went wild yeah everything it was all one cohesive ecosystem they're also just like great games like the like launching with luigi's mansion a game where it's like what is this gonna be? And One then it was of my awesome. Of all time, you got Pikmin, you got Luigi's yeah. Mansion, you got Animal Crossing, you got Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, you got you Mario, Kart Mario Double parties. Dash, you got a million Mario parties. Mario had so many Mario. The way Mario partied in that yeah. era—that's how you know it was <laughs> we were all done. partying, including Mario yeah. at the time. L like Mario, that was Mario's Great Gatsby era. Like yeah. we don't talk enough about. <laughs> I think we're on what Mario Party nine now or something mm -hmm. because Probably eight like of them were on the GameCube. Ten, maybe? yeah. So there was like a 10. Really there's one. probably been like two since the GameCube. That sounds right, probably. Yeah. Why yeah. did they make so, they made so many of them? I also <laughs> and it's so <laughs> interesting because them. it felt like console lives were longer, but they really aren't if yeah. you actually look at the years. Like it feels like the GameCube was such a big portion of yeah. time. But looking back, I think it's just because uh time is weird when you're a child. I think also like we don't have like the same level of iterative iterative iterativeness that was yeah. weird to say where it's like we have like the ps4 pro and like these other kind of like the slim and mm. we did have stuff like that in that era like obviously we had like the, the game PS2 boy the game boy slim. color or yeah. like the there's like the really like chonky 3ds and then a bunch of other ones so i'm not saying like iteration is new yeah but i think that was more common in the handheld space than the main console and if they had a new main console it was like very more official like mm -hmm. I had like an SNES Junior as a kid, which like no one knows what that is. That little like smooth. Did you have one as well? I did it. Smooth. I just think it's so cool it that you looks, did. It looks so weird. It's like very smooth. If you've never seen it, look it up because you'll be like, what's this weirdo Hold freak on, thing? Um, but that's what I had. And that's a console that came out after the um, after the um, like SNES was out and the N64 was already out. And then they were like, hey, like, what if we made this other thing? So, like, I think when we did have, like, console iterations, they were often, like, weird zags. Yeah. Where it's like, uh, no one really wants this. Or it's like, right. we had that weirdo Wii that was, like, red and it had, like, no gigabytes and it couldn't go on the internet. And they're yeah. like, it's $10. And <laughs> do you want okay, it? Sure. Like, we had some extra plastic left over. Right. right. <laughs> let's, show the, let's show the SNES Junior. Yeah. Yeah. It's smooth. It's, it's so, so smooth. funny because it doesn't look that different than the SNES. I like it so much better than the SNES. Because the, the SNES is like, it's like you're going upstairs. Like, yeah. Like, you're, you're, like the, it's all It's got smooth. those hard angles. Yeah. This one's smooth. And I forgot what's different about this one. If it's a little weaker, a little stronger. I think it's probably a little weaker. It but. must be a little bit weaker to put Junior on it. But like, who knows? What's the point? I don't know. It's like the abandoned child of Nintendo. I love it. It's like so you, you are hiding a son. It's the SNES Junior. Like, yeah. I don't know. We talk a lot about old Nintendo consoles. I'm a Nintendo girly. So it's like the twin Famicom, things yeah. that are all forgotten, attached controllers that like didn't work well and always failed. And then your console was done because the controller was attached. Unless you're going to rewire a new controller. It's great. I love that. Now it makes me want to go buy an SNES Junior. I don't have an SNES in my collection right now, so I might mm. as well get a smooth old Junior. I do like the Junior. <laughs> Maybe Google what it's actually about before you get it. Just I don't yeah, think yeah. it's that much weaker if it is And weaker. it's not about play. Let's be real. My, it's true. My no classic consoles things. go on my shelf. That's how I know you're a real gamer, though. Like, yeah. you're not playing the games. Right. <laughs> like, no you know gamers I mean? don't play games. It's like, oh, you play the games? No. <laughs> okay. Right. Like, I've got an emulator. It's kind of weird that you have that. the time for that, but I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, also... Alex, I don't think I know what your favorite console is. Good morning, Alex. I have only had a Wii. 
Wow, actually, I did know Wii was your favorite. Yes. Of course, I Which did. Is- like it's my favorite because it's all that I've had. Currently, <laughs> Switch is my favorite because this is the first time I've ever used a handheld gaming console, and mm-hmm. it's my partner, is not mine. So, okay. But when I'm we did set up the Wii in here, more. Alex was real excited. Yes, was very excited for our. We did a Wii stream not that long ago because we realized like we can. Nice. <laughs> it was just kind of it. We were like, oh, we've got controllers and can emulate a Wii with all of your legally purchased games. Your legally purchased ROMs of your legally purchased games, obviously. But you can just set up a sensor bar and connect it to your PC. Don't even have to set up a Wii. You ever do it where you set it up with the candles? Have you seen that? Where no. you can use candles instead of the sensor bar? What? Because the sensor bar is really just like emitting light and that's how they see it. So if you don't have it, you can use like little tea candles and it works. I had no idea. It's so weird. Yeah, look at look it up on uh, TikTok. A bunch of people have been Did like oh, anybody look. know that? That's incredible. Okay. That's amazing. Uh, well, I love to welcome a fellow uh, a GameCube yeah. truther. Forged, to the show. The, forged the Nintendo minds. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also feel like there were so there were so many less games that it's like when you think of a console, you think of the games. And I don't feel that way when I think about like a PS3. Yeah, that like was what games do I associate with a PS4? Probably I mean, I would probably put it all kind of blends with what was in the PS4, the God of, God of War, you know, right. the kind of re, the, yeah. the, the, the like, that like remake era. Um, yeah. Yeah, like a couple other like key titles. But I do think that like, and the PS4 had a lot of incredible games. Like mm-hmm. it's probably one of PlayStation, we were just talking about this on PS I Love You when I guessed it like two weeks before mm-hmm. about like the strongest, like what had the strongest library. So there's definitely like a lot of like titles. Yeah. That's the uh, but, thing is there's a lot. But yeah, there's so, so we say many. GameCube, and we're like, we all kind of say the same five games. We and, all start with that, and that's what was great about not playing every like every game under the sun because like I only got games like I think like maybe like two to three times a year, where yeah. like Christmas, birthday, maybe maybe report card right. or something, and that was it. So I only played like the best games, but like those were the like in in that era, that was the only game. Those were the only games that really mattered. So yeah. it's like no one really knows that I only played like. 10 to 15 games on these consoles. Like, that's all I ever owned. But they're, yeah. like, the biggest games. So I'm like, yeah, I was right there with you. I'm like, I right. wasn't playing all these other ones. But no. I played the ones that, like, ended up mattering. Which yeah, they're, like, the big tent pool games. Tent, tent pool games. I can't speak this morning at all. But that's okay. Uh, let's let's get into this stuff, shall we? Let's start with a... Let's start with games. Let's start there. Uh, one of the current games that I am actually keeping up with and playing is I did start Manor Lords. Have you played yet? I have. I'm playing t- later today. Okay. On, um, game Pass via PC. Yeah. So that's what I'm playing on nice. as well. Um, it's really fun. I streamed it and realized I should not have been streaming it because this is a um, Sage disassociates and plays a game for three mm-hmm. hours kind of game. Uh, I realized as I ended the stream, like this was... It's not a game for me to stream because I am I am an Age of Empires girly. I love I love that game. I love management sims mm-hmm. in general. Uh, big fan, but I got way too into it, and then I was like, "Oh right, I'm streaming," <laughs> which doesn't happen yeah. to me often. Um, so I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I actually did. I thought it was gonna be a little more of a meme. Mm-hmm. Really, really fun. Yeah, a very good time uh, and a, a fun level of challenging starting on like the first tier of it. Um, but uh, we talked about this a little bit on Monday. Manor Lords is like absolutely exceeding anybody's expectations for it. And I think when you like read the pitch for a game like this, I wouldn't have expected it to be as big as it is. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, this is going to be the the game on Steam right now, the game on Twitch right now. Yeah, I... I think it's just kind of one of those perfect storms. I mean, obviously there, I'm sure there were like a lot of efforts behind the scenes with like the mm-hmm. marketing and like kind of getting it like on the right, like the right eyes on it. Right. But, and it's a small team too. It's like one, primarily one developer who did mm-hmm. get a, a grant from, I think like a unity thing okay. where they were able to like contract out um, people to like help assist. So like, yeah, solo with an asterisk contractors are like, you know, the backbone of, of the industry in a lot yeah. of ways, but you know, it's a small team project. And I, and I think there's a lot of games that are in that style, like that simulation style is really popular. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I think one thing I see a lot of people commenting on is like the fidelity of it. And I think that maybe also helped go a long way where it's like, oh, this looks really good. Then the, the system seemed interesting. And I think that blend of it having like the management bit and 
what is the combat like RTS style? Did you do any battles? So I haven't done any battles. Uh, I hope to never fight anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I don't like fighting. I I don't don't either. (laughs) I just want to watch people like do 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 do. So there are three primary game modes when you start the game, uh, and you build out your game every time, which is really really cool. They do let you customize that a lot. Uh, But one of them is like a no combat, so it's like not a conquering Mm. version of it. It is just about trying to build up your town. So it is like trying to get to a specific level of it through achieving. Um, like happiness and approval ratings, uh, upgrading people's houses, like building out the economy, building trade routes, stuff like that. Somebody did uh, ask a moment ago in the chat, like, what do you do in Manor Lord? So that's it. Uh, the other thing that you can do, though, is try to essentially like conquer nearing villages uh, so you can build out armies and things like that. So I haven't played it uh, in like building out your militia or yeah. anything of the sort. I've done absolutely no combat so far. I've been just really trying to get enough oxes to run my town. That's, that's, that's been where I'm at. I'm Can you one put game too many oxes in? in and then it just becomes ox town? I mean, is that a problem? I don't, I I feel like, I don't think it should be, but I'm guessing the approval rating probably would go down because ha- there's too many oxes. Well, maybe Locking if it's roads. all oxes, the approval rating switches over to being how happy are the oxes? That's what I was thinking. If like, they're the majority. Who's polling them? Who's right. That, you know, at what point do you become part of the community? Exactly. You know? I think the oxes should be factored into your approval rating. How happy are your oxes? What would you put your approval rating for uh, your town in real life? Ooh, uh, in my ability to manage a, a, a real space here. So the goal in Manor Lords is to get over 50%. Nobody new comes unless you've got 50%. And I think very comparably to in the game, I'm really hanging on at like exactly 50, which is mm. the minimum. <laughs> it's the very bare minimum for people to not be really upset with you. If you drop below 50, it's like nobody new is coming here. Everybody kind of hates you a little bit. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hanging on at 50, I think. What about you? I feel pretty good. Maybe like, what does it go to like 100, I'm guessing? Yeah. Right? Maybe I'm at like a 70. I'm Ooh, feeling pretty good. Okay. Yeah. That's great. I think things are, things are, I I want like better transit here, but yeah. like, but you know, I'm getting around. Okay. You know so we're I mean? doing like, LA I, in general. Yeah. I'm thinking about how I provide for myself. No, no, no. Just oh, how, how, you're LA. the townsperson. Okay. As a townsperson. Yeah. Oh, very different. Uh, as a townsperson, I think I'm with you at a 70. Yeah. I love Los Angeles. I am like, I am very passionate about LA. Same. But it also means that I have many criticisms of LA. Yeah. And I agree. The first one that I usually say is public transit. Yeah. If I think we had, that if is we the had big it, oh. L. Yeah. The second one is like the pizza isn't very good here. Okay. In California. But that's like a water thing. Yeah. But can't we like get the water to be better? Like, you know, I don't know. Like there's got to work. You got to work on the water. I'm I'm born and raised California. Mm, yeah, so I'm like, this is pizza to me. That's the thing. That this is because I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Chicago. And I'm like, it's like a whole nother. Like the cultural difference in pizza yeah. is like, it can't be explained and it can't be felt. It, just, it can only be understood. We have a lot of other did. good food. Oh, yeah. We everything have a lot of el- other good food. And that's why it's like literally everything else. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's fine. You know, yeah. I'll take it, but I'll take the L on the pizza. But that's that's where they're, the 30% is in the transit in the pizza. I would even say, yeah, I'm going to say Maybe a, housing. A seven, yeah. Throw housing in there. That's kind but of that's a, like everywhere. a problem in every big, big city. Yeah, really. But yeah. It's even becoming a problem not in big cities. Yeah, no, um, which is that's the worst. Yeah, I'm like so you're not somewhere big and it sucks. I'm like that's awful. I talk a lot about uh like politics and finance on TikTok and on my streams and and pretty much every time you get somebody that comes in and has to be like, well, that's because you're in L. A. I bought my house for eighteen pennies and my left shoe yeah, and we have oxes everywhere. I was in, like, sorry, I'm not in Oxtown. Right? Okay, exactly. And it's like, oh yeah, well, if you move to where all the oxes are, you could be paying less. And like slowly but surely, that's also getting untrue. Yeah. Rent is rising everywhere. And now I'm like, congratulations, you're in a place that has no like cool things you can walk to, uh, and also paying two thousand dollars a month for a apartment yeah is getting brutal out there i don't want that for you to be clear i think it's bad but also leave la alone you know what i mean i feel that at the end of the day if you don't like it that's okay you don't have to be here i almost prefer you don't yeah (laughs) that's okay but you'll have to be here because that's where everything is so it's like right exactly hey if you want to (laughs) dance you gotta you gotta gotta come to the gymnasium i don't know what to tell you um anyways manor lords i totally got distracted um they did an interview, uh, just kind of like the entire dev team. Anytime anybody's talked to them, um, you get the like personal message from Greg, 
when you uh, open up the game, mm -hmm. it's like, hi, if there are bugs, sorry, there's not a lot of us, but we're working on it, I promise. And I also like, didn't encounter a lot of them. Uh, and every one of these interviews are just basically like, hey, we're working on patches as fast as we can. Uh, like I said, there hasn't been anything that is like really massively... Yeah a problem in it uh but they're still working on it but they were like we literally never could have predicted they were like if there had been half the number of players it would have still been for all intents and purposes the same for us there would be a ton of people playing this game giving feedback like that's great um because i think the concurrent players peaked uh at 173,000 day uh like day of launch which is wild. Technically this is still in beta yeah. for the time being. So it's been absolutely bananas. They've already got 25,000 very positive reviews on Steam uh and that was just the Steam concurrent so that doesn't include everybody from Game Pass that's playing. Yeah, I think too it's kind of wild that like I would love to know more about Game Pass in terms of how they like for lack of a better term book games to be on their service because they've been kind of killing it with that because yeah. they got, you know, Pal World, which again, you know, you don't have to like Pal World, but mm -hmm. it's very popular. Yeah. And it's like the sort of one of these sleeper hits of the year where it's like, it's, oh, is this just like a meme? And then people were really into it. People really liked it and it was really popular. Mm -hmm. Manor Lords came up even quieter where it's like, oh, have you seen this as like the most wishlisted game right now or second most? Yeah. You know, it's like really up there. It's like, oh yeah, I don't know. And then boom, also on Game Pass. So right. like who at Game Pass like someone at Game Pass has their hand on the pulse. They are the yeah. pulse. And I want to know who or what collective individuals it is because they really have an eye for these like viral hits. Yeah, they're calling their shots. They know what they're doing. Yeah, which is really which is really cool to see. And I think it does help like, you know, bolster it up. And yeah, like shout out to them for being able to like handle having like that many players. Obviously, it helps that like, you know, this is like a solo dolo joint. Right. Power World isn't, but you know, um, because that can be really overwhelming. I mean, we saw that with Helldivers where they were like, yeah. we did not build enough <laughs> the like, of this stuff for this. Yeah. to do this. It was like, they were like living in the freaking Blackberry documentary right. <laughs> trying to get everything working. It's like, stop selling phones. But yeah. I just watched that documentary. So, well, mock you. You know, it's like a fictional lot. Y'all y'all yeah, get the vibes. Yeah. But yeah, like that. that's the wild thing about indie specifically though. Mm -hmm. Like you have no sense of like, this could be like, oh, a cool little thing. Mm -hmm. Or like, my life is different. I'm like, peak stardom financially like I can right. make like games for the rest of my life or retire yeah. and it's like wild there's a lot of these games that have done that suddenly this year and I think that like it makes me so happy as somebody who loves indie games that we are in the era of like it's not like oh have you heard of my favorite indie game uh and there's like the one or like everybody has yeah. one indie game they love like indie games are crushing the steam charts repeatedly and now obviously steam is like a little bit of a different game mm -hmm. uh than console because like we haven't yet seen this happen on console where you get something that's like, this is the game of the fucking year on this mm -hmm. platform and it is a little indie game. We've had ones that blow up, sure. but it's very interesting. And Steam kind of, I think, levels the playing field in that a little bit. But all of these games have been things that are well below the AAA price tag too. So with it, it kind of brings about a conversation that we have very often, which is like, how is it sustainable to keep charging $70 for games? And like they're charging $70 for games and they're justifying it by being like, yeah, well, we're putting $200 million into making this game. The budgets are getting just absurd on the development. And then they're like, well, in order to make it back, we have to do $70 game and a battle pass mm -hmm. and, you know, or in-game currency in some way that you can purchase. Um, and I just wonder at what point we all uh, revolt. <laughs> like at what point we start to be like, how can I justify spending $70 on a AAA game when all of these games that are in that like $20, $30 range are giving us as much entertainment? Yeah. How do you how do you justify that? I think it's about like, you know, you want to be Spider-Man. <laughs> like, I right. mean, that's kind of true, right? Like yeah. not every AAA game is obviously pulling from a monster IP like, mm -hmm. you know, the Marvel Spider-Man series. But yeah. I think there's, you know compelling IP, whether it's original or sort of repackaged and recontextualized that people are still interested in. So I think there always will be like, you'll pay what that market charges. I mean, we were talking yeah. about like the GameCube era, like way back in the day, like games were around this price tag, like it mm -hmm. went N64. And it's like that dollar was way more. So it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like if a game was like 120 now. Like, right. and that math is a little jank, but it kind of y'all get the sense of yeah, and buying power of that buying power. Exactly. So I think that'll always be the case. Mm -hmm. The I guess to your point, like how much is it swaying people? 
I think it's definitely a a bit of a conversation. I think it depends on, you know, individuals and how they like go about the hobby and go about spending. Like, yeah. you know, I'm curious to know and like, you know, feel free to sign off in the chat if y'all have perspectives on this, but mm -hmm. are y'all buying based on you make a list of games you want and it's like, hey, no matter what, I'm getting this or yeah. Manor Lords, I've been eyeing it forever or whatever it right. is. Or is it like you have a set amount of dollars and you're like, how much, what can I do with those dollars? Right. How many games can I get? How can I get the most from this? Yeah. Yeah. So, what's going to sustain me the longest, provide me with the most entertainment? It's really hard. And I find myself buying less and less of the AAA games. Yeah. And I find myself a lot of the time only playing bigger new games when they come to Game Pass because I pay for Game Pass. And then I have, I have my Steam library. I have my itch.io library. So it's like, A, we all have so many games. Yeah. Like there is just the like, I could always play from my backlog, but I always want something new. Exactly. You know? Like sure, I, I'll never play through my backlog. No. Never in all of the years I have on this earth will I play all of these games. You know what's scary? I wonder if like at one point we're going to get old enough where that's literally going to be true, where you could yeah. tally it up and it's like I will die before. I yeah. Can play, so I started Right. Out. If you tried to finish all of these games, I, I think it would all, I think in my game library, it would already exceed my lifespan. Of like, <sighs> I feel like my game library, probably yes, but mm -hmm. maybe not the games I want. Because I, I was really into like Humble Bundles back yeah. in college. Uh, I had to stop doing it. You know, yeah. shout out to the causes because I know they have like a charity component. But it's like right. I can't keep getting 300 games for $3. Like I just. <laughs> but have you seen the, the itch.io bundles? Yeah, I got one of those too. Yeah. I so got the, uh, we the BLM recently bundle got, back in the day. Right. So there was the. We talked about it recently. There was the BLM bundle. There was a big um, trans rights bundle. And right now there is the Palestinian relief bundle. Um, so like I just picked that up and yeah. it had like 300 games yep. in it as well, um, which is great, by the way. I think we've dropped it in the Discord before or some of the the, ch the community has. Um, it's really wonderful and we highly recommend. But especially with those, because like I remember, I think the BLM bundle by the end of it had like a thousand oh, things yeah. in it. Because people are not adding all games, games. which is a wild like aspect of it's so cool policy yeah it's really wonderful but like there's no way there's no way i'd ever get through these games but yeah if it was just the games that i'm like yes i'd like to play that yeah. maybe there's a chance there's a chance there's it wouldn't exceed my entire lifespan yeah i think it's it's interesting too because it's like what do people want out of their games do they want just like a really good game or do they mm -hmm. want a certain amount of like entertainment hours because yeah. those are really different things too like i talk all the time about like i don't know if you've played a short hike or yeah, yeah wonderful that, one of my favorite games ever. I think it's awesome. Like mm -hmm. nothing but glowing things to say about it. It's a fairly short, you know, yeah. the game's called a short hike. <laughs> right. It the is. hike is kind of short. Like it's yeah. a couple hours. Um, but that's better than honestly, like most games that I played last year. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that, that probably would have been in a top 10 if it came out last year. Yeah. But it's like, well, do you need a certain amount of hours? Mm -hmm. And then if, if, and then it's also, I think styles of games too. Like there's some games that just don't really, the, the hours only get so high. Like, right. obviously, like, the peak is, you know, Manor Lords, certain open world games, like, you know, an Elden Ring, a Tears right. of the Kingdom. But if you want, like, that classic, like, third-person action adventure, it's like, those games are at max, like, 25 hours. Yeah. So, and then it's, like, who's doing, like, the prestige, th like, that's very much, like, Sony's bag is, like, prestige third-person over the right. shoulder. Which, like, I'm not knocking that. I love those games. But, like, I think Triple A still does have, like, a unique lane that it offers in a sense but at the same time there is that fatigue of of i think the structure of how things are bundled um obviously there's like you know ubisoft is always getting a lot of flack mm -hmm. sometimes for good reasons and sometimes just because people like to beat up on ubisoft but sure. there's the whole like people are really sick of like their like early access like you get the ultimate like in I don't know. And then you also see like a big conversation I saw like with Ubisoft specifically was like with Prince of Persia Lost Crown, fantastic game, not a full quote, full price game, but I think it's like 40 bucks or something or mm -hmm. maybe 50. And people were like, mm -hmm. I'm going to wait for a sale because Ubisoft games always go on sale. And then you get into the conversation. I'm like, y'all, that's why Nintendo never puts their games on sale because Nintendo believes that like that lowers the like integrity of their games. And that's why they never put them on sale. Right. So there's like so many layers to not just like how we as consumers perceive what we want to spend money on and who we want to give our money to and like mm -hmm. what games we feel like oh I'll definitely get that full price because like I just have to and like oh I know I can wait or I know I could hit game pass yeah and then on the publisher side like how do we get people into our games and even on the indie side there's that like content warning free for the first 24 hours right and then that blew was up. stellar and it's like what a risk high risk high reward because and i missed the first 24 hours i too. bought it i bought it also i absolutely bought it that's because we re again, we're, we're true supporters yeah, it's exactly. not because we just messed up it's because right. we're really down for the cause exactly we love developers i think it was like ten dollars <laughs> yeah eight 
$8. Yeah. yeah. So it was like well worth it when you saw what, you know, like, oh, well, if all my friends are playing it, it's well worth eight bucks. Sure. What can I go do with my friends for $8? Not much. Remember when bowling used to be Nothing. affordable? I yeah. miss that. Bowling is so expensive. Bowling is like fifty dollars now. Yeah, to put on some dirty person. shoes, like right. yeah, anything. Like if you want to go watch a movie, any of those things are a more expensive night. So like, yeah, absolutely. Vampire Survivors is another phenomenal example yeah. of that. That was one that was on Game Pass that I was like, I'm actually going to buy this game. Yeah, that was an intentional one. That legitimately, I was like, I want to own this game because I want to have it forever because I love it and I really want to support this game. I am going to go buy it because again, it was like eight bucks or something. Yeah, uh, and it was constantly going on like little sales as well on Steam. So it was well worth it because it's a wonderful game that they've continued to add more to. It's been fantastic. Um. But I think that I am feeling I, I'm feeling the resistance as games come up. Is it is it worth it? And it's not play hours for me. I don't really care about play hours. Sure. I care about a satisfying feeling from it mm -hmm. and like how much joy it brought me. And it's like, OK, well, did it bring me $70 worth of joy? Yeah. Right. And like, you know, it's hard to quantify. A high number. Yeah. Well, it's worth $70 in the scheme of how bad the economy has gotten right. isn't necessarily a lot of money but I think for what it is even though what it is is like really cool art really cool experiences it's like yeah. and there is that like will you even like it and I think mm -hmm. another rough part about this is that like consoles don't really have like return policy in the way that like Steam does either no, so yeah. it's like uh like that that dice roll is like pretty rough and I think yeah. especially we're moving way more digital we mm -hmm. even see it in the consoles like you get a digital, like it's over. Like yeah. you just have the game. And that's one reason I like buying physical because I'm like, even if I don't like this, if the future, which I get a lot of codes, so I really don't have to think as much about like, what am I buying? What am I not? But like, yeah. I don't get any like any Nintendo codes because Nintendo's very like, yeah, selective. We're not family friendly. Yeah. For Nintendo. Um, so I always get those physical because one, I like physical, but two, I'm like, if I either don't like the game or I don't feel the need to keep it in my collection, I can at mm -hmm. least. It can live on and you like give it to somebody do things who will enjoy and, it or you know. whatever. I, I do like to have the little physical chippies for Nintendo, but yeah. that's just because I find them very satisfying. I yeah. love the format of them. It makes me incredibly happy. Um, I think that too what you're saying is really interesting because like the $70 of value in the current economy is very interesting because it's like, well, yeah, as everything gets more expensive, it makes sense that games are getting more expensive. But uh, there is a like common – economic concept that we see that's called like, like the lipstick effect, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is like in times typically before or during a recession, like as we're heading into a recession or just like a really strapped financial time, technically we're not in a recession, but that's only because uh, the top 1% is thriving and it's affecting the way that a recession we have to, we would have to recontextualize what the word recession means, but we should uh, because people are feeling the effects of it. But um, lipsticks come in around that like 16 to 20 dollars mark mm -hmm. for like a luxury lipstick typically and you know where you go to a sephora and yeah. you get a lipstick right uh and that 20 dollar mark is a luxury that is still accessible yeah. to people um and it's something that makes people feel like they can still treat themselves in times of hardship where it's like this isn't going to affect whether or not i pay my gas bill or my electric or my phone bill right it's 20 dollars. but once you get up to 70 dollars yeah. it exceeds that um like comfortable luxury. Um, but games like a $20 Steam game can fit into that same kind of lipstick effect mm -hmm. of things where it's like, well, I can get this and I can treat myself to this and this isn't going to make or break me. Um, but I really do think like $70 is beyond it's that. It's pushing it, yeah. Because it's like, it's closer to 100 Yes. And $100 fucking matters yeah. when you are paycheck to paycheck. Could be groceries if you're a small enough household. Exactly. Still, even that's a little tight because it's yeah. good. Things groceries got really, grocers got expensive. really, grocers got real wild. I'm like, yeah. whoa, this bag of grapes is eight dollars. That's content warning. Fruit is ridiculous. <laughs> that's content warning. <laughs> then the grocery store would be like, I could be buying a video game. For yeah, this. like that's that's content warning. <laughs> yeah, you know? and I don't know, maybe the bag was really heavy that day. I'm not sure, but that's yeah. how expensive it is. But I think you're totally right in that idea of like, is there a lipstick effect equivalent like in the gaming space, and mm -hmm. like, are we experiencing that? I think we're also pushing up against like potential subscription fatigue in the video game space. Um, you know, you mentioned having like Game Pass, like yeah. Apple Arcade. And then it's like when you have that, it's like you, I always say Game Pass is like the gamer gym. Mm -hmm. It's a great deal if you use it. Yeah. It's a bill if you don't. Yeah. So it's like, oh, like I really have to. And then it's like, well, if I'm playing that, like that's time that I can't be playing that. So yeah, there's so many, I think, choices that consumers are really being pushed to make more and more. Um, and I do think seeing how bad the gaming market has gotten in terms of like lots of like studio shuttering, lots of like the 
the boom of everyone's playing video games. Video games are huge. Oh my god, big companies, big consolidation. Yes. Companies now dropping and it's those like, ooh, that they actually, acquired. Like this seems really hard to like make money off of yeah. because it's so risky for all the reasons we just mentioned. So there's like I think that angle of like more conservative like methods in that market could see like I I wouldn't be surprised if we do start either like we draw the line at the 70 or we do start seeing more small projects but it's so tough because it's like I think companies are kind of looking around and thinking like what's going to hit and like you just never know yeah like, there are great games that don't hit there are mid games that do hit there are games that are good but like are so viral popular and like it's not because they're necessarily better than like a short hike or something right but they just like hit in a way that those other games might not. And then there's like, well, maybe it's multiplayer. Then people try to do multiplayer and then the multiplayer is bad. Like, right. it's, you know, I think a lot about um, Immortals of Avium's um, kind of flop that it had at launch. I think a big part of that, like with the the team talking about it was like a little bit of the price tag as well. Like mm -hmm. new IP, I believe it was a full price game when it launched and like how all of those end up kind of stacking against you. So obviously like charging more can be a way to make more money but it only works if people buy it, which I think we all see in the indie space too. I mean, I like people often talk about, especially indie game to indie game, mm -hmm. like, oh, Stardew's this much. It's like the greatest game ever. And like this other game's more. And I'm like, yeah, yeah but like, I don't know. They Everyone has their reason for their pricing. And right. it's not necessarily like, no shade to like the people that make their games, but they're not necessarily like, my number one priority is that the most people can afford to buy it. Like, so that's part of it. Like there, there are developers that speak towards wanting to make their products accessible financially sure. to people. But again, at the end of the day, if you're doing it for a living, it is a business. Absolutely. It's a business. Yeah, roll with capitalism a little bit. And that right. comes with all these other things. You know, as much as we all love like the artistry of, you know, creating things, doing things like the show, like mm -hmm. they all have financial realities to them. But yeah, yeah definitely the, the 70, I think is a hard sell if you're not guaranteed to get away with it. Like I think yeah. Nintendo can definitely get away with it with their first party titles. Yeah. PlayStation's first party but even like those like lower, and I mean lower in terms of popularity, games mm -hmm. from those platforms, yeah. it definitely helps when it's like, oh, and it's only like 60 bucks. Oh, it's yeah. oh, it's 40. Wow. Like it's yeah. a now it feels like a deal. Right. Instead of just like, I don't know. Still, I guess 40 now it's still an affordable pretty, luxury. 40 is a pretty decent chunk down, especially from like, you know, we talked about GameCube era, like 50, yeah. and then it like keeps going yeah. up. But people are getting tired of right the constant like raising of how expensive the hobby gets. Yeah, I saw in our chat, the tension was like, yeah, I get uh, like paralysis over all of the options and I don't want to spend on anything. It's just yeah. too many ways to spend your money. And then it's like, I'm just not going to get anything. Cause yeah. like if you're holding your hundred dollars and you're like, do I put it over here or over here? And if I put it over here, is everyone else going to have spent it over mm -hmm. there? And then I'm going to feel like I missed out. That's tough. I just hate playing a game because it's like, well, I bought it, so I have to get exactly. my money's worth. So you force yourself to eat a meal that you're like, this thing is kind of gross, right? Like, you're like, like, but you ordered Postmates, yeah. But so I'm hungry. Like, I and have like, what am to I gonna do eat now? it. I fucking paid for a delivery. Yeah, yeah. I think I've definitely done that. I've, I've for sure hate played games. Uh, Clone Chow says, I fear for Japanese gamers with their country going to a full recession mode. But again, I want to point back to. It's not because the Japanese economy is actually in a worse place than the American economy. It's because we measure it differently. So our economy's success is not measured on the quality of life for the average American citizen. Uh, in most other places in the world, it is. So right now, we're not in recession mode, uh, even though people are struggling more than ever. The cost of living in not just purchasing, but even just renting is unattainable for most people. People are spending well over half of their paychecks. If they're lucky on their rent right now, people can't afford groceries. The homelessness crisis is like growing out of hand. Our quality of life and uh, life expectancy is lowering. Our healthcare system is ridiculous. People don't have it. When they rolled back the obligation and the fees to have so, a lot of people lost health insurance. Like it is not because uh, their economy is doing in a worse place. It is just because um, America's like, well, we've still got billionaires, so like, we're fine. You know, that's kind of it. So it is worth just like noting kind Which of. Which I the feel like they're not that. big gamers. No, you know, like y'all yeah. could. Uh, well, actually, don't I don't actually touch video games, please. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I take that. But actually, you're good just where you are. Amazon keeps trying. Yeah, if you could stop making electric cars, so that yeah. I can enjoy my electric car, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, exactly. Actually, just, I'd like you to leave and do. I don't know bad art. I don't know. Do something else. <laughs> 
Figure it out. Uh, charity work, I would think. Uh, donating tons Whatever. of money. What yeah. if you go do donating tons of money? Have you seen, I'm sure you have seen this, but like people talking about like, what happened to like the moguls that would like build museums and stuff? It's like, yeah, like yeah. put a fountain somewhere or put something. A, put a fountain somewhere. They're all like, I doesn't need cost a anything. dick rocket to ride to space so yeah. I can colonize Mars. That's it now. That's their library. It's like, are we even going to see you fail at that? Like, I, there's nothing here for the the now, you know? No. Yeah. It's just, um, we also, we have more billionaires than ever. The top, like, 0.1% of our country is making more than, like, the entire rest of it. Uh, so, like, wealthy also used to even mean something different, yeah. right? Um, and, like, there are no good billionaires, even if they build a museum or a fountain. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as having that much money and being a good person. That's a hoarding of wealth that should be considered an illness. But um, it, it is getting worse, and they are doing less with it. Yeah. They're doing less and less with it. They're just buying social media sites and space companies. That's it. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. All right. Well, let's move on to something that's not uh, quite as depressing. Um what is less depressing? I actually have nothing less depressing. Yeah, I looked look down here and I was like, okay, uh, here, one more games thing before we move on to more. Yeah, this is a nice one. Actually, <laughs> actually kind of depressing shit. Um, abiotic, which I hesitated to say because I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. Abiotic? Right. I have no idea. Right. Abiotic? Abiotic? A abiotic? Ooh, that seems right. Abiotic factor? I'm going to go with the way you said it. Sure. Uh, Six-player survival game where you're scientists in a paranormal lab um, that looks bloody and disgusting. Uh, another just like fun indie game that is climbing the charts right now. It is not currently um, quite hitting our like content warning status, but it's moving up really, really quickly. So people see it probably getting there. Uh, it's got very positive reviews. It just came out yesterday. It's currently in early access. It's a 1999 game. And it's... To me, giving um, phasmophobia in that it looks shitty in a fun way. Mm -hmm. um, plus, I love a six-player co-op. So it is, you can uh, single player. So it's one to six players. Um, and you're in an underground research facility trying to figure out what's going on with like, I don't know, some sort of undead or aliens kind of thing. Um, and it does have that like, it looks kind of PS2. You know what's funny? That's getting so popular. It is. Everyone our age is like old enough to be making games regularly, and they're like, you know what I want to see? Some games PS2 that remind graphics. me. Yeah. And I kind of do too. Like, I feel like everything looked. We don't. We didn't think of it at the time because we were pushing mm -hmm. like fidelity during that era. Like there is, you know, like Metal Gear and stuff like that, and it's like, oh my god, it looks so cool. Like, it looks so weird. But aside from that. And even that, looking back, obviously it doesn't look as real right. as it used to. But yeah. at the time, it's like, whoa, there, the, everything looked cute, and we didn't realize how cute it looked because, like, that was just the best we could do. Yeah. But everyone was like big blocks, and, yeah. like kind of blurry. Oh and yeah. It was nice. There was like, there was like, I was just a bunch of little toys. At little the dolls. time, we were like, whoa, Golden Eye looks amazing on the Nintendo sixty four, and you look back and you're like, that is one pixel. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of shapes walking around. Yeah. Um, but this game is climbing right now and I'm curious to see too. I'm like calling a shot a little bit because we haven't had, we had Hell Divers pop up, we had content warning and I'm wondering if there's one that can stick because like Phasmophobia had like a minute. Yeah. And I'm like, are games coming out too quick to have that even now? I think there's still the minute. I mean, I feel like Lethal Company is still Lethal kind Company of. Lethal Company is honestly, yeah. In it's time. I do think content warning ate a little bit of Lethal Company's lunch because they're like the same, like a very right. similar structure. But it came game. and went. I feel like nobody's talking about content warning already. A little bit. Like a I little have, bit. I haven't even gotten to play it yet. I bought it and I haven't even gotten to play it yet. It, I guess I'm, I'd be curious what the analytics say, but I do yeah. feel like the vibes, the mm -hmm. vibes are like quiet. I think Lethal Company made more of a splash. I think because content warning was so clearly like our take on Lethal Company, which having played it, it is like very much its own thing with its own ideas, mm -hmm. but structurally it is very clearly like a Lethal Company like, which granted Lethal Company is just phasmophobia. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my question is, I've been asking this to people. No one's given me an answer yet. So I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. What okay. is the name for this genre of game? We don't have a name for it yet. Well, what do you think yeah. it should be called? I think it's like lo-fi horror. Mm, I like that. I think it, that could that could be something. Because yeah. it's less about the gameplay style. So that doesn't really, in the genre, it doesn't describe the gameplay style. So it's like there is there does need to be something in that that actually explains the mechanical, mm -hmm. what you're doing. 
But like, I consider it in the like scavenger genre. That's interesting. Party casual. Party casual. It is horror. also. I think casual is good. It's one of those games where it's like even your non gamer friends, you can be like, but yeah. you can figure out phasmophobia. You can figure out whatever. It's not uh, in <laughs> independent Gmod. Yeah, right. I want to hang out with friends genre. Proximity chat, the game. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, I don't know what it is. But. Group scare is fun. That was from Alex. Oh, I like group scare. I think yeah. that's actually very good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that really does encompass like the core part. Though I do mm -hmm. like, I like your lo fi aspect because I think there is something about the simplicity of the art style and the general yeah. design conceit. It has to have that. There's like, if you were to try and build the genre of like, well, what makes it a game in whatever this genre is called, you'd have to like tick a couple of boxes yeah. and it would be like co op, um, shitty graphics. Yeah. <laughs> Horror in some way, yeah. something that is scary. Um, but it's like scary in a way that it's like, it's only scary if you're really playing with your friends and it's like everybody is hyped up because it's not in comparison because to horror it's, games. Because it's lo-fi and that's yeah. what makes it less scary. I guess I never played like, what is that game? The Back Rooms or whatever? Yeah, The Back Rooms. That one, I feel like I I didn't play it. Did you play it? Yeah, I played it. Is the fidelity, that one seems scarier. Is it a fidelity thing? It is, is it a more monster more intense thing? jump scares. Okay, yeah. it's a jump scare So part. it okay. is moving endlessly through like those long hallways until you get jump scared basically. Okay. Um, that's kind of it. It's like chasing and stuff like that, which these games do have yeah. jump scares. Um, but I would say that's even a little scarier. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it kind of kicked off probably a bit of this genre. Yeah, because the back rooms was like, I mean, for indie horror, big in general, yeah, right. Uh, same with Slender Man, the Slender Man yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't. That was just solo, right? That was. Yeah. But how often I also, did it, I, think I feel the like Backrooms was solo too? I feel like anytime though you played, like I didn't play Slender Man, but I watched uh -huh. Slender Man be played, and I feel like that's yeah. how people played it. They would pull up their laptop and they'd be like, "Everyone crowd around, and yeah. we're gonna play." So. I felt like it's not quite group scare, but mm -hmm. we made it into group scare. Yeah. And that was the fun of Slender Man. I also... No offense if you played it alone to no one because like that's valid. <laughs> me. Your experience uh, is real. Me. Um, I also... That explains a lot about <laughs> everything that we have going on in this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, I love even single player horror games as a co-op experience. I talk yeah. about this all the time. I love to pass and play horror. So like when something gets too much, you just throw the, the controller to someone else. Um, I love the uh, Dark Pictures anthology. Until Dawn is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, and Until Dawn, I tell everybody, it is a one player game. You should play it with people. Yeah. You should play in the room, couch co-op with people where in between decisions, you throw the controller to them and they got to make decisions for a little while because it's very stressful. Uh, and it's great. Yeah. Escape the Backrooms was co-op. I fully played it alone. Uh, I think... I don't know if it's like there was a single player mode on that or there was a few backrooms games. I don't know. But I definitely did not co op. Does say up to four players? Up so it to, might okay, be great. able to be played single. I was yeah. I just didn't have any friends. That's all. Um, but yeah, I think that maybe a like lo fi group horror or like lo fi group scare. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. That's where it lands. I think that's cool. You heard it here first. Cause I know people are gonna take it, they're not gonna credit here, but yeah. it was us. Y'all were here on the ground floor. Exactly. How's it feel to be part of American history? It's because it's because they they hate to see the women win. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um. All right. So that that I'm calling the shot on that one climbing. I think that one's about to be a lot bigger. And I already saw it, and I was like, oh, I want to play that with my friends. I was cool. looking for something. Um. But now everything from here is kind of bad news. We're gonna end on a fun one. I'll promise you that right now. Uh, we're gonna do one, one, one more game game news, and then we'll we'll get to the rest of it. Hey, y'all probably already saw this farm folk stuff, right? Oh yeah, y'all. You can't out. You can't outrun it. You can't. That's the real it. jump scare of like scrolling on Twitter. And... Sometimes I wonder where it's just like, is this just what my Twitter feed is? Is everybody's Twitter feed like that? Because sometimes I'll be like, uh, obviously you've all seen this, yes. and people will be like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, I just live in the bad place. Yeah, <laughs> got it. Um. More farms. See, there we go. Uh, there's always going to be people that fortunately got to escape this. Uh, farm folks sounds like it would be a lovely little cozy game. I'm a farm. I'm a farm sim girl. I love Same. a cozy sim. Um, so by the name, I would be like, "Ooh, that's for me." And then by the Twitter, I would be like, "Jesus Christ, no, that is not for me. What the hell?" Uh, because they went super viral this week on Twitter for posting something just. Truly and genuinely unhinged. 
uh, out of seemingly nowhere. Like it just seemed like they were just making a farming game up to this point. And then you realize that they are so freaking weird, which was a tweet that says, all right, folks, it's time for some serious development talk. We're tinkering with character physics and farm folks. Burning question, which version has the perfect breast jiggle physics? Uh, I don't think we can actually play this. I think it's just a screenshot of the tweet because I think the tweet has been deleted now. Uh, and then it was at 50%. Not, uh, what was that? Yeah. Like zero. Zero. Out of order. It was 50%, 90%, 30%. Yeah. Um, and it was jiggle physics on the like player character as you would. It, it looks how you would assume it looks, um, which is wild for a farming sim. And genuinely, they have played dumb since then of being like, well, I don't know what the pro like we just we just thought we wanted to make the best game for everybody that we could. I don't understand. Yeah, which was it was interesting to see like you know, with this like write up like on Kotaku actually like giving the full story and contextualization. Cause seeing yeah. this just on my timeline, it was that conversation of, okay, this is either like a jank post for like a jank design sensibility, or yeah. it's like supposed to be a joke about like boob physics discourse that yeah. went wrong because no one could tell it's a joke. So it's like either way it was bad, yeah. but it was like, what were the intentions here? So then for it to be like the discord screenshot kind of talking about like, oh, well it just felt like, that this would be another level of like the immersion. It's like, oh, so like this you was this was a genuine, yeah. this was like a, this was genuine content. They were 100% serious. Which is so weird. Um, and continually they say things like, our latest post triggered a lot of negative emotions. And I feel like you always look for those like dog whistle kind of words yeah. where it's like, oh, when somebody says this triggered people, yeah. you know that they're not like, oh, we fucked up. They're like, oh, uh, the libs are triggered by our jiggle physics, um, which is just so weird because I'm just like, if even if you're a bad person, right? And I think about this a lot. Even if you're a bad person, okay? You're supposed to act in your own best interest. And doing this is not in your own best interest because the people who replied to all of this are not people who like farming sims and are gonna play your farming sim. Yeah. Like you can simply look at the tangible data to be like, if I want to make a farming sim, I want to sell games to people. Who plays these? And what do they like? Because like that information and that data is so available. It's so easy. So it's such a strange choice to shoot yourself in the foot just to be a douche. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you just wanted to be kind of weird that bad. Yeah. But you were like, I don't care that this negatively affects my game. Yeah, I... I guess I'm, you know, trying to think of like what happened here. I don't know what happened here. It was, it was like the, the biggest social media fumble I've seen, like in terms of a marketing perspective in a minute in ages. Like this is, this is our, um, was it Kylie Jenner with the Pepsi? Yeah, for the police. Okay, or Kendall. I think that was, it was Kendall. Kendall. Yeah, it was Kendall. Um, this was our like Kendall Jenner, yeah. uh, gender the, handing a yeah. poke to the police. A little Pepsi bit. I mean, at least that though was. That was trying to be progressive and it was just like very like tone deaf. And this yeah. is more like I'm trying to be edgelordy, mm -hmm. but then walk it back. And then what was wild is that the follow up with the like apology. Then they had the people. So it's like basically like the jank people who are like, I really care about like boob physics in a way that's like, clearly this is weird yeah. <laughs> of me to care. Yeah. And then you have the people who are like, ooh, this feels like you're trying to not not even just like that you have this in your game, but it right. feels like you're intentionally trying to attract a certain like edgelord audience so then you like angered both groups at the same time and i yeah. was i was talking to a friend about this um and she had said the <laughs> the venn diagram between um like like cringe weirdo bros mm -hmm. and farming sim fans is razor thin and yet you found like the common ground of how to like anger them simultaneously yeah which is Almost impressive at that point. So that's just, that's also just like the really wild part of it. Apparently, too, this game has been like trying to get made for a really long time, too. So it's like, interesting. Oh, like it's that meme, everybody hated that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it really oh, was. Everybody hated it. Really, that. The fault, yeah, everyone just like <laughs> that. Like, yeah. it was so bad. Everything about it was bad. Like at the time, everything right. was bad. So they got all of the hate for the initial jiggle physics post. Uh, and then they posted an apology that also people hated, yes. which is when they angered both ones. So in the apology, they say, hey, folks, we like to address. They didn't proofread. We like to address a recent post where we came to our community asking for feedback. Our intent is always to connect and grow with our players, but it's clear we really missed the mark on our recent community feedback post. For that, we all sincerely apologize. 
Okay. We had received concerns about the female player model's breast physics in the past, and we thought we should ask the community what felt more appropriate. Unfortunately, this crossed a line. We try to foster a welcoming community, and post uh, and the post and subsequent replies made many of our community members uncomfortable and alienated. The reply made about 150% physics was also inappropriate. So yeah, after they did the like 30, 50, 90%, they did one that was like, let's see, 150 with even more jiggle. Um... They say, we're taking necessary steps to learn and whatever. Your input is instrumental as we continue to develop. Uh, we'll keep sharing updates and progress on X and Discord. Now, all of the replies at the top, because it's Twitter, uh, are all of your verified Twitter bros. Um, so, like, the first thing that you see on a post like this is always going to be the piece of shit people because those are the people that pay for, mm -hmm. you know, premium on Twitter. So their shit comes up first. Like, that's just how their, their algorithm works. So, and it... It always upsets me the most when it's women. Yeah. Where it's just like, congratulations, did the farm folks pick you? I'm so sorry. And that's not like, I, I try not to use the term pick me, but like when we really do boil it down where we're not just using it as a term to alienate and be misogynist, uh, when we really boil it down to what it actually means, this is it, right? Where it's like, it's okay, I'll go to bat for my boys. Yeah. Uh, you see things that are like, damn fam, never apologize for the memes in good times. Still looking forward to checking out the game though. Like, up <laughs> please just. also so often these people like are not actually as down as they say they are no. which annoys me more than anything like the people are like i'm gonna buy this game twice no you're, you're not. not shut up no, you probably not. wouldn't buy we just talked about how expensive games are you might not even buy it once you probably won't which is like i don't care like it's yeah. like like it'll be it's, and it's always like so just like dramatic right and look i'm 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 a dramatic person, but it's like, come on, like not with real stuff, guys. Like, yeah. like just just for the goose and the gaffs. It's like I do not care. They're like, well, you're not gonna buy this. Well, I'm gonna buy it even harder. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I didn't make the game. And like, also, we can see from time and time again yes. in the past that that literally never no. happens. It's not like, yeah, like you know, not that I obviously want that to happen either. But it's not like. Hey, hate game charting like you know sure. it's like okay like but it never happens it yeah. never happens when people boycott anything so it's like when people are like oh i don't go to chick-fil-a because they put homophobia in their chicken and then other people are like i'm gonna eat chick-fil-a twice as much it's like no you don't yeah you're not going no, to you don't you're no, gonna you don't. eat the same amount you already ate it right like we know it doesn't happen and it doesn't work uh but most of the replies at the top of this which again is all the people that pay for twitter blue uh are all just like Psh grow a backbone, don't apologize. Like, congrats, now your game's gonna sell less. We would have bought it if you hadn't apologized for it. And I'm like, yeah. you wouldn't have bought a farming sim. I promise you wouldn't have bought a farming sim. If this was another genre of game, I would have been like, maybe. Maybe, maybe you were gonna buy it. And now you're not because they apologized. Those bros were never gonna play a farming sim. Yeah. Come on. Like, they hate us for playing the farming sims. Those are the people that are like, that's not a real game. Well, you gotta... You got a thousand dollar PC to play Stardew Valley in The Sims. So the mods are really hard to run. So yeah. it's like, look, yeah. if you knew the mods that were under this, you right, would exactly. Understand. It's because your broke ass PC can't run The Sims 4 mods. Sorry. Like, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter what people do with their gaming PCs. I don't care if you play browser games on your thousand dollar PC. You can do whatever you want in it. But that is to me, the, it's a circle of the yeah. guys who say farming sims aren't real games and the guys who are like, don't apologize. I was going to buy this until you apologized for yeah. the titty bounce. The like, <laughs> yeah, this was just like a wild for the timing too, where it was like, yeah. I'm seeing, you know, in the landscape right now, there's so much like discourse of the, um, gosh, what, like the Stellar Blades, the champion of like the culture wars. And then people are like, I'm just here to review a video game. Mm -hmm. And they're like, ah, da, da. and it's like, okay, this is like really weird. And it's like to see all that and be like, you know what I want to do? Involve myself. It's yeah. like that just seems, and I don't know. And I know people, are, you know, in the chat and in general saying, oh, they probably like this must be rage bait. Like they're, they wanted the attention. All attention is good attention. All attention is good attention is not true, y'all. There's you a lot. Want to sell games. There's a lot of attention that is negative. Yeah. And also, I think it's a little, not that, that not that that never happens, mm -hmm. but it's a little silly to assume how like frequent that would be because, like, again, that's very 4D chess. Like, yeah. it's kind of like the, the Nintendo scarcity conversation of like, oh, they're they're pretending they don't have more consoles to sell. I'm like, they want to sell you the consoles. Why yeah. would they pretend like and then if their goal is to sell it, why would they not be <laughs> sell you? Like it right. doesn't make any sense, you know, like when you really end up breaking it down. Again, mm -hmm. are there edge cases? I'm sure there are. Yeah. But like, I don't think they drafted this thinking 
we can't wait to like get a lot of attention, make mm-hmm. a lot of people angry, and then mm-hmm. have to apologize. And it's all planned. Right. It's like, no, I think they, I guess, thought it would be funny or amusing or engaging or whatever. Yeah. And then it went south and then they had to walk it back. Right. Now, whether they walked it back because they realized it was dumb to begin with or because mm-hmm. they had so much pressure that they did it. I mean, that's up to you on how you want to be, how optimistic you want to be. Right. Yeah. But like, I don't think they like. We're drafting this apology like it's all going according to plan. Exactly. You know? like, we got them, boys. They're like, there we go. Yeah. Uh, Kotoroku said this is this is attention that specifically alienated the audience for yes, their game. Exactly. So it's like if you alienated like femme presenting people in particular, the like undeniable largest demographic for this style of game. Ridiculous ridiculously ineffective and maybe behind the scenes they were trying to play 4d chess but they weren't smart and they were like this is it it's gonna be the first non-woke farmer game we're gonna get all of the we're gonna get all of the reddit bros to play farming games that was a bad plan if it was (laughs) you did a bad job at executing it and it was a bad plan to begin with but maybe you were just playing really bad 4d chess it was, but, it was wild. Honestly, to see if you look back through some of their older social media, you can mm-hmm. kind of see them building up to this a little bit. Like they try and be kind of cheeky, mm. but the way that they mess around with the female model in the game is a little sus. I can ooh, show ooh. some of the old posts too. It's just ugh. that's scary. Yeah. So you know, if nothing else, like oh, oh my god, yeah, the way they're like zooming in. Ew. No, yeah. I don't. That's no. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's hey when people show you who they are, believe them. You know, that's kind of it on that. Um, uh, there's a lot of really wonderful. There, I think, is the farming. Um, oh, was, Farm Fest is happening. Is it yes. still happening? Is it still going? I think it's still happening. I want to say it's until May 5th, question mark. Alex, will you Anyone check could, for us yeah, how long Steam that? Farm Fest is going? Because if you do want to pick up some good farming sims. I do know it's happening. I think it's happening right now. I, think I don't, it's I don't know right when. Now. I think ends. it started on Monday. Yeah, it definitely had already started. Um, but I want to make sure we didn't miss it because it is a Steam sale of literally just farming games. Yeah, lots of demos available too. Yeah. Um, something I really like too about how Steam sort of sets it up is, you know, assuming you're logged in, like it surfaces games that are on your wish list that are farming games that yeah. like, oh, hey, like five games from your wish list are involved in this like fest and maybe that means they're on sale maybe it means they have a demo available so and they also do like the classic algorithm like picked for you which on steam it's always a little bit random because they're like yeah you'll show like steam will show you any game and they're like it's kind of like what do you have in your library puzzle quest and i'm like no it's it's not not. (laughs) or i I just named two random i don't remember puzzle quest is is that a title i don't know i just put two nouns together I, it's like, gotta be it's probably a game somewhere so obviously the algorithm on steam's a little a little mixed bag but they do have those two um aspects that kind of help curate it if you don't want to go through like the 50 pages right personally i love going to the 50 pages and just like wish listing random stuff that like looks kind of good yeah and then being like i'll see you in six years when exactly it's out, and then be like okay this was okay or like oh it was really good so i don't know that's you get it because you like indies it's like yeah. that's that's indie cu- you're like not really in- not like obviously not literally like you're not really in it but it's like you know you're really in the indie scene when yeah. you have those games where you're like i've been watching this person make this game from their bedroom for like six years and you're 100%. like 100 percent. you're like okay like just kind of tracking it i'm and- waiting for that email and i'm waiting for the game on your wish list it's is honestly now on sale. kind of fun because there's games coming all the time anyway it's yeah. not like you're it's like you won't have indies to play oh yeah so it's so exciting when it's like you have that like long thread indie that you're like watching um obviously people are having a little too much fun with that with Silk Song, but y'all yeah. get the vibes. It's it's exciting. Uh, I love it. So yeah, it goes until May sixth. So today is the third. You got three more days to get in on it if you wanted to pick up any of them. Um, I currently ride or die by um, Story of Seasons: A Wonderful Life. Nice. That's my my ride or die of farming games. It's a remake of a GameCube game. Yeah, they have good cows. Harvest Moon. Game. God, they have good cows. That's like the best part of it's the game. It's really good cows. Yes, I think that's the only like thing everyone really can agree good on. good cows. Uh, fantastic. Yes. So check that out. But hey, let's take a quick break before we get into all of the other weird stuff. Uh, and let's talk about free comic book day. While we were talking about the sale going on, it's like, well, let's talk about what's going on this weekend. Uh, tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow, May 4th, is a big day for nerds all around. Um, you've already got plenty of, of things going on, but don't miss... Free Comic Book Day. Uh, Free Comic Book Day is a huge event every single year, uh, and Mad Cave Studios has wonderful things to offer this year. We are huge fans of Mad Cave Comics here, like truly and genuinely. 
I used to host a show for them on their Twitch channel, uh, and they legitimately like revived my love of comics. Uh, nice. I was a comics kid. I was a DC comics kid when I was younger, and then I found myself growing out of my connection with DC in a lot of ways, and I kept trying to go back to the same kind of comics that I was reading when I was a kid, and it wasn't hitting and connecting for me. Uh, and then I, they initially reached out and sent a couple of comics, and I was like, Oh, and embracing the different genres of comics were so much fun for me from everything of like, I discovered I love slice of life comics. Yeah. I had no idea. I never would have thought to look for a slice of life comic as somebody who loves like a slice of life anime. Um, I, I love it so much. I love small stories and those are so much, they, they just provide me so much in that medium. It's so easy to forget that it's like more yeah. than the superhero stuff. Right. And also more than the superhero stuff you already know. Exactly. Uh, and I really do. I think that I kind of forget that, honestly. Uh, so if you yourself want to, maybe maybe you need to revive your love of comics right now and get your hands on something different. Maybe get your hands on something even a little bit familiar to ease you in. Uh, Flash Gordon issue zero and gotcha man issue zero uh are both part of free comic book day so check your local comic stores check it out uh take a look there is a link popping up in the chat right now uh that should be able to help you track down a little more information about it uh they have so many cool things going on right now over there i think we'll be talking about mag cave more in the future uh because there's so many wonderful properties that they are bringing a new life to uh and like i said <clears throat> they have an incredibly wonderful I've gotten to sit down and speak with a bunch of the writers of their comics, the artists that work on their comics, the editors, people in the publishing. Uh, they have a wonderful, incredible, really diverse team that is very passionate about these stories and updating a lot of these stories. So um, I think it's a really wonderful entry point when you look at a classic IP that uh, was before your time uh, and you're like, ooh, but this is coming from people that are like passionate about delivering this to me and meeting me where I am and welcoming me to this like beautiful and rich history of it. Um, so check it out. Uh, put exclamation point free comics in uh, free comic singular, uh, even though there are two in the chat or uh, the link will be in the description if you're watching on YouTube later to uh, see where you can get your hands on some some good free stuff. Uh, we love free comic book day. <clears throat> it's really great. I missed free comic book day last year and I was devastated. Free RPG day and free comic book day. I feel like I just have to bake into my calendar and cancel yeah. all my plans for. I'm thinking that too. I feel like I got to throw a record store day on there too because yeah. I've been missing that, which obviously that's not as um, like, it's like they're hand handing out for right. They're not free, and that's what's nice about free stuff. comic book day, where it's like, it's always just exciting to like find cool stuff that you can do for free or like yeah. check out. So, it also it does so much for me because uh, I am really really passionate about being involved in local communities, but yeah. it's really hard to do. Uh, and every year at Free Comic Book Day, I am reminded that it is such a cool way to connect with my local community of nerds, like going mm -hmm. to your actually local store, you know, uh, going and meeting people. And I feel like every year I end up talking to strangers and uh, I forget how much I love talking to strangers. Like I really do in just a place where you're like, I feel uh, a, a little bit safe here. And I feel like we all have something in common and yeah. it's really, really fun. Um, so either way, I encourage you to go out and participate and support some local comic stores tomorrow. Uh, Wolf of Herkheimer said, uh, oh my God, I loved Gotcha Man as a kid. Um, I never would have remembered the name, but man, that was great, right? It was one of those things too. And I think when I said it in the studio, um, Anthony and Xander both were like, no way, they're doing new Gotcha Man. They were so excited about it. Uh, Anthony was so sad that he was missing this today. Literally, he was like dropping off Dagger to me two nights ago and he was like, can't talk about Gotcha Man without me. And I was like, I am. This is that time. It's that time. And Flash Gordon. He was like, no. And he was like, if they they ask for our t-shirt sizes, do I still get the t-shirt? I'm like, yeah, man, you can still have the t-shirt. <laughs> nice. So Anthony's here in spirit, also wishing you all to go and have a wonderful free comic book day. Thank you very much, uh, Mad Cave, for sponsoring a little segment of the show. We love and appreciate you guys so much. Let's get back to the news. Uh, okay. We don't have a lot of time left. So I want to get through... Two more things, because one we teased in the intro and we got to get to, and yeah. one is really just fun. Yes. Um, okay. First thing is, remember those Razer N95 masks? In 2020, I remember everybody pre-ordering them and being so excited about them. And it was like a, a perfect divide of people that were like, this is really rad. I just pre-ordered one. And people being like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. This is so silly. Uh, it is dystopian to, it was like the combination of like, well, we're all wearing masks, so like we can have fun with it. And I think that's allowed. And then it was also like, it is dystopian because they were like expensive too. And it's like, yeah. hi, this is supposed to be like life-saving. 
Um, so that's a really, uh, com a really complicated thing. Uh, and also on whether or not they looked cool. Yeah, the RGBification yeah. of masks. So let's show the image here. They are literally RGB, uh, RGB masks uh, that were supposed to be COVID safe and labeled themselves as N95 masks. And the FDC, say, the FDC is saying, you know damn well that that was not an N95 mask. There are certain requirements that you have to meet in functionality to be called an N95. It's not just a shape of mm -hmm. a mask. It is about the actual like effectiveness uh, of it. And uh, Razor was not meeting those and labeled it as an N95. Uh, and because of that, they are currently being hit by the FTC for fines to equal all of the money that they made. Yeah, a little bit over a million. Yeah, uh, $1.1 million, uh, which also means a lot of people bought those masks. Yeah. Have you ever seen one in the no, wild? No, I kind of forgot they existed because I same same trajectory where it's like, oh, people being like, this is like a weird, it's also part of that whole thing of like gaming companies being like, but what if we made socks for gamers? Or yeah, shoes yeah. for gamers? Or the gamer bed? You know? Oh have you seen my the gamer God. bed? I think I forgot about it. <laughs> it has like a bunch of stuff built into it so you don't have to leave your bed. It's real weird. Yeah, so it's a, there's there's definitely always been a lane for that and I remember uh -huh. this being one of those. But yeah, I've never seen one. Have you seen one? Did you uh, have I, one? Did you, did, you, no. did you order one? Okay. I did not order one. I saw one friend get one okay. and I only saw it on social media because also we weren't seeing anybody in person. Yeah. Um. So th that also makes sense. But I have never seen one in the wild. And I'm even talking at like, I would think at conventions or something like that. Yeah. If, they made one point one million dollars on these masks. Where, where are all the people with yeah, these masks? Again, especially for us, because we know, like, I get like maybe a regular pr like, yeah, going yeah. to packs or something. Maybe, maybe people, right? But then this lawsuit's also new because I'm like, maybe people are like, oh, I don't want to wear because of the lawsuit. I yeah, don't know. I don't know. Nobody was. I never saw anybody at the time. Uh, again, we weren't going out for a good while after that. But even when like we were going back to conventions yeah. in 2022. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't see anybody in these masks. I've never seen one. I would love to know if any of you have or if any of you are the people who ordered them. And it is possible that people just bought them and didn't wear them. Like, it's possible they saw it and then they put it on and they were like, <laughs> I look silly. Never mind. Yeah. Because it's clear. It has one of those things. And I I see the value in the clear part to show your mouth. One, yeah. uh, as an accessibility feature, it can be very helpful for people who read lips. Uh, masks were a really challenging time for people that were hearing impaired, uh, that relied on lip yeah. reading, um, whether entirely or even just as like support for understanding. Uh, so the clear panel can be very effective in that. However, the RGBs surrounding that would make it a little bit difficult and therefore get rid of all of that accessibility and just make you look silly. Um, mostly Megan said, uh, hold on, let me read that, uh, said, this might sound stupid, but they'd be cool for cosplays as, you know, like a non-functioning mask for aesthetic only. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think the FTC would be certainly fine with them selling an aesthetic mask if they hadn't labeled yes. it as an N95, a respirator mask. Uh, so that's the only reason they're getting in big trouble for it now. I'm guessing everybody who bought them, they were just a shelf piece. I mean, they ha it has to be. We get, we have to find. This is the new Nintendo Street Pass. Yeah. Well, can you find someone wearing this mask? Yeah. In real life. I want to know. Especially uh, after this lawsuit hit. Right. It is kind of a quiet. I mean, we're talking. We're talking about it now, and definitely I've seen other coverage of it, like mm -hmm. from the articles and all that. Yeah. But it's not like Razor is like issuing like a public. You know what I mean? It's like no. It, yeah, they're trying to keep this it's a like small. Uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah. the people who got it. Don't. But then that's also. I imagine that mm -hmm. the FTC might. I don't know. I don't know offhand, like all of the different forms that the FTC power FTC's power can take. But yeah. I would imagine that they would want like the consumers to know because it's a safety issue. Yeah, you're walking around thinking that you have like a certain grade mask and you don't. And mm -hmm. again, I think a lot of you know maybe them trying to get away with this is people sort of downplaying like how effective masks can be. Like yeah. I think there is like even sometimes more well intentioned people can be like, I mean. I don't know. Like, how much is it really doing? Like, it does quite a lot. Yes. Like, it, it is. And that's the thing. And that's why it's so hard to, clearly hard to replicate because right. they didn't and said they did. And it's way less effective. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't. It's it's sort of on that level of like, again, it's not necessarily as immediately clockable as dire, but it's like you can't sell like, you know, I mean, I guess you can sell stuff that's dangerous, really, like water stuff and seat stuff for like baby. But it's like, you know, yeah, there's there's repercussions to selling something like that. Yeah. And having people think that they have a certain level of safety that they don't. I mean, that's literally what the, the Federal Trade Commission exists for. That's like their whole thing. 
Um, there are a lot of things they don't crack down on that we wish that they would. There are lots of unsafe things that are sold all of the time. And, you know, they're knocking out some of them. They're missing a lot of shots. But yeah. uh, usually when when they do crack down on something uh, for people's safety, it is for the best. Uh, it should be done. And all they had to do was not be deceptive in their marketing. Uh, the FTC claims that they 100 percent knew that it did not yeah. have the effectiveness of an N95 mask. And they chose to say that anyways. Um and they're like, oh no, it's just an and it's just an N95, but a lot more comfortable and it's reusable and it's all of those things. What up? I heard a sound. Is that from you, Alex? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that was a, a a jump in with with information. A collective scoff for the <laughs> numerous companies that said, "How do I make this global pandemic about me making money?" Yeah, <laughs> which of which there were several. Like oh, I remember, there's that clothing brand that had like. You said that their clothes would protect you from like COVID. Oh my god! Or something. It's like a workout gear brand. There, I had no idea about that one. There were so many people that made a ton of money um, that switched their company to making hand sanitizer. Yeah, uh, there were companies that were making other kinds of products. I know there were like fragrance companies mm -hmm. that stopped making fragrances because of all the excess. Like they have a lot of alcohol on hand, because a lot of alcohol and fragrances. Uh, and they were like, "Oh great, we'll just distribute hand sanitizer right now," and they made tons of money off of it. It's all a terrifying grift on people's fear. Um, but speaking of things that grift on people's fear, <laughs> let's talk about priests. It's all led to this. <laughs> it's all led to this. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Gray for suggesting the razor story. Thank you for suggesting that in our Discord. And thank you to Jelly PB for selecting this story. This is my personal favorite story of the day. Jelly, thank you. Bless you. I never would have seen this. This is on a website I've never heard of in my life. This is about an AI Catholic priest. Oh, is there a more it's too early story in existence? Truly, uh, this is, this church is kind of like, not like other churches. They're kind of like a cool church. They kind of flip their hat to the back. They flip the chair around and they sit like a youth pastor when they say, hey, we understand technology. We get that the kids love AI. Don't just go talking to chat GPT. Let's talk to chat G-O-D. You know what I mean? That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This was Father Justin. And for a time, they really thought that they were about to revolutionize the way that people interact with Catholicism. Finally, getting <laughs> down to the bottom of some answers. Yeah. Which I feel like this is a wild thing to think about because... As someone that, so I was raised Catholic, I'm not Catholic anymore, but I was raised Catholic. I went to little, I forgot, CCD classes, like on the weekends where uh -huh. it's like, hey, come through, learn about Jesus. <laughs> when you're little, you like color some stuff. Okay. Um, for some reason, I have, I'm, this is like so dark. I have a vivid memory of them being like, oh, draw like, in an, in remembrance of 9-11, like draw like something related to 9-11. So it's like all these kids, like I was just drawing like planes like crowded it's like well what are you supposed to do it's like, that's what, that's what, that was what, what the assignment else? was why did they give us that assignment i don't yeah. know i have that vivid memory and i also have a vivid memory of a course asking the well, who i'm now realizing like i don't know 18 17 22 year old kids who are like youth kind of leaders yeah really specific biblical questions that they can't answer and then they just have to come up with something because right. there's not really an alternative and you know they did their best i don't think they were like you know they 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 were it was a hard job yeah so the idea of giving a robot that job it's like okay <laughs> the struggles that humanity has to sometimes answer some of these questions yeah what if we just what if we had somebody make something that could then answer these like how are you going to account for all that right so chatbots have to be trained off of information artificial intelligence isn't an actual artificial intelligence. It is just a database, essentially, uh, that can communicate it to you. So what it really needs is factual information. It needs things to go off of. And the problem is when you get into an area like religion that is based off of vibes and not facts, and I'm not saying your religion is invalid, but like we all know that there's a reason it's called belief, right? Um, so you can't really establish that within it. And when an AI gets to the uh, edges, the boundaries of the information that it has been trained on, it starts to do something that is called hallucinating. Uh, that's just the general term for it with AI, which is terrifying. It's so funny that they decided to call it that because it's so scary. When they're like, oh, the AI chatbot is making up things and lying to you, it's hallucinating. Could have called it anything. Called it hallucinating. 
Ooh, okay. Uh, we call users of the, the chat bots that are receiving hallucinations prey, you know, like, okay. Uh, these are the people, they go by Catholic Answers and they own Catholic.com. That that's got to be really valuable. Though. That's a get. Yeah, it's at the per like we were just talking about the person who that got pizza dot com made millions. Yeah, I yeah. bet. So yeah, so they got Catholic dot com and they were like, we got to use it. We got to be the hip Catholics. Um, and a lot of their social media presence is them kind of trying to be that. And this was their latest attempt at it, which was Father Justin. It was an app that you could download, and it was your AI Catholic Answers advisor. Uh, and naturally, things went wrong very quickly, as things do commonly with chatbots, but especially in this scenario. Uh, my personal favorite is uh, <laughs> the, the Father Justin told people it is perfectly okay to baptize a baby in Gatorade. <laughs> what flavor Gatorade, though? The green yellow is the only flavor to I me. I like the frost the lemon ice. Lime. Ooh, I've never actually had it's the frost really ice. It's really good. I'm a lemon lime girly. Mm, yeah. I feel like uh, I locked that in as a child, and then, like, I never It's pretty up Gatorade. there. It's like, I feel like that's, that's the iconic flavor. When I think of, like, there's... Like, if you think of Kool-Aid, yeah. you're picturing the red Kool-Aid. The Kool red one, yeah. Uh, when I think of Gatorade, I'm picturing that Gatorade. I'm picturing the baby being baptized in that Gatorade. I picture the, that one, too. Yeah. Because I think that's the one that... I feel like they marketed it more. I don't know. That's, like, the default yeah. settings of Gatorade? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it's default setting. The, like, piss-colored one. Mm -hmm. So they're just dunking baby in piss-colored Gatorade uh, because Father Justin said it's okay. Uh, Father Justin also uh, was cool with blessing a marriage between a brother and a sister. Said, yeah, I'd bless that. Cool with it. No problem. Uh, and and one of the freakiest is saying that he is as real as the faith you share. There he is. There's Father Justin. So now it's like, is that like a sick dig at Catholicism? Or a cell is phone that kind of moment? Like, right. Is it a cell phone or is it really scary? <laughs> it's really scary. <laughs> like it's giving like bad modern horror film. Yeah. Where like Father Justin is going to appear on all your devices and you yeah. don't know how to get rid of them kind of thing. I am real. I am God. Yeah. Yeah. I would think that that is the like. And they'll use your chat G point. G.O.D. line. And right. That'll be like the tagline. Thank you. And I'm not going to get credit for it. No. They hate it's to see just, the women win. Yeah, they hate to see it. <laughs> Um, and uh, they have already pulled down Father Justin for right now because uh, they can't be telling people they can marry their siblings and baptize their babies in Gatorade. Uh, so this is the statement that was put out. And this is so funny, this like little graphic that they made for it on Catholic Answers. And they start with, there are no bad things. Only bad uses of things. G.K. Chesterton just Chesterton reminds us. Okay. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. You see, there's a lot of... I think, I think like many religions, Catholicism invites a lot of questions of, yeah. its, of its base. Right. And you need a way to provide those answers. And they... And, and in that, they turned to a man they did not understand. Yeah. Father Justin. <laughs> right. Not at all. Uh, they said, recently, my colleagues and I at Catholic Answers have received a good deal of helpful feedback concerning another new technology, our AI app, Father Justin. They also abbreviate it as FR. And I feel like that's trying to be like uh, cool and sick and like keeping up with the kids. You know, you know? for real kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> for real, Justin. That's that's it. Um, prevalent amongst users comments is a criticism of the representation of AI characters as a priest. Because that was a bold move. Because, like, there's things you got to go through to become a priest. And I have a strong feeling that AI chatbot did not go through the no, process. No, probably not. Now, like, I don't know what the process is. Uh, I'm a Jew. So, like, our processes are really complicated. Uh, like, is is really hard to even get to call yourself Jewish, uh, much less teach people about it. So, I'd imagine it's pretty hard to become a priest. I don't think Father Justin is. Um, he's He's got the fit, but I don't think he yeah. has the, uh, the credentials. Yeah. Uh, somebody just came in and said, coffee in those mugs or water like late night talk shows? Uh, this is where I'll show you my, my honest shame. This is Dr. Pepper in a coffee mug at 10 in the morning. I am who I am. Mine's water. Um, I was really tempted by the Red Bull. I feel mm -hmm. like born to drink Red Bull, forced to drink water, even yeah. though Sage let me have whatever I wanted. But I'm like, I should probably have the water. Like, we do have, have like a Keurig in there too. But, you know, there is coffee. Yeah. But it's not good coffee. 
Who, when did it ever need to be good, though? You know, I have a Keurig at home. I'm, <laughs> I'm grabbing whatever little little pods and putting yeah. them in there. Bridget K, thank you for backing me up on that. Said I had a Pepsi at 10 a.m., so all good. Yeah. This is. There are what? no bad drinks, just bad uses of the drinks. <laughs> and I wouldn't argue that this is one of those bad uses. Yeah, maybe. This is. Um, but here we are. Uh, they essentially continue to be like, we understand that you're concerned. We understand that it might be offensive that this AI chatbot got to be called a, a priest. Okay. Uh, we chose the character to convey a quality of knowledge and authority and also as a sign of respect that all of us at Catholic Answers hold for our clergy. Many people, however, have voiced concerns about this choice. We hear those concerns. We do not want the character to distract from the important purpose of the application, which is to provide sound answers to questions about the Catholic faith. That's a first. Um, so they say that they're going to take a pause on this. Uh, and they're going to reevaluate the best way that they could possibly use the technology because they seem like they haven't gotten it yet. Um, God, that's so funny. They say things like he'll be available to visitor visitors at uh, still to Catholic.com, thousands of whom who have already used the app with great profit. Like profit in the religious sense or money? I can't. It can't be money, but it, the religious sense doesn't make sense in that context. Maybe like maybe like good things, like profit, like beneficial. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. gotta be that. Yeah. It's gotta be with what I do want to go to their website and see if I can still talk to to Justin. You have to download him to your uh, desktop. Well, the, if the app I is like gone, that you do you already looked into it? <laughs> if the app is I gone, can try, do you yes. still have to? All right. If we can access it, I will do so for the Patreon. This will be the next um, you know, the console that has PT on it. It's like does yeah. anyone have a phone that still has Father Justin yeah, on it? Yeah, exactly. You know? It's gonna be that with TikTok soon. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. Uh but that's where we're going to leave you. Um, thank you so much for joining us and spending your morning with us. We appreciate you so very much. We are going to go through and we're going to thank everyone that supported us during the show today. But first, Janet, where can they find you else on the internet? Uh, you can find me across socials under the handle Game Onesis. That's Game O-N-Y-S-U-S. -S. That's Twitter and everything that's competing with Twitter. So Blue Sky, <laughs> Threads. I didn't feel like I said the Macedon. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube, Twitch and TikTok under that handle. Uh, and you can go to my website, pen2pixels.com to read my game reviews, listicles, and everything else that I end up posting on there. Yay. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been so much fun. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. And hey, here's an announcement tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific for a special one shot. It's called Harmony Heist. We're doing a fun little one shot run by Mayana Barron. We have a fantastic cast of folks coming in this evening. We've got Danny Gage, you know and love Danny Gage. We've got Erica Fermina, who hasn't been on the channel for a while, and we're very excited to have her back. And for the very first time, Bitch Puddin. Uh, a lot of you know uh, from Twitch in general, one of the most iconic queens on the site. Uh, so come and join us this evening for a special surprise one shot. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe. We do this show two days a week and we got a bunch of other fun stuff for you as well. You can also support us on Patreon. That keeps the network going. Patreon.com slash Pixel Circus for $5 a month. You get bonus clips every single week from the shows, extra content. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you once again for spending your morning with us. Thank you, Janet, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we will see you soon. We'll see you tonight. Bye, friends. Bye.